Question 1. Listen to a musicologist talk about drums. Drums can be divided according to shape. Some of the types are tubular, vessel, and frame drums. One of the most common tubular drums is the long drum. A lot of long drums are cylindrical. They have the same diameter from top to bottom, like this Polynesian drum. This drum was carved from a length of tree trunk and has a single skin head. For vessel drums, we have the kettle drum. Kettle drums have a single membrane stretched over a pot or vessel body. Vessel drums come in a variety of sizes, from the very large drums of Africa to the very compact and portable drums, like this one from Hawaii. The third type I want you to see is the frame drum. A frame drum consists of one or two membranes stretched over a simple frame, which is usually made of thin wood. The frame is shallow, which adds little resonance when the skin is beaten. A lot of frame drums, like this Turkish tar, have metal jingles attached to the rim. Match each type of drum with the correct picture. Questions 2 through 3. Listen to a biology professor talk about caves. The interior of a cave is divided into three zones. The entrance zone may serve as a place of shelter for animals or people. Prehistoric humans used entrance zones of caves as shelters and burial grounds. Therefore, such zones are of interest to archaeologists, as they provide clues to the habitat of early human beings. The next zone is called the twilight zone. The twilight zone is sheltered from direct sunlight and is home to a large, diverse population of animals, such as salamanders, bats, and during severe winters, bears. The third zone, the dark zone, is the true cave environment. Perpetually dark, it has only slight seasonal changes in temperature, few if any air currents, and a constant relative humidity of nearly 100%. In the dark zone live animals that have adapted to the world of darkness, including small shrimp, beetles, spiders, and fish. These animals are usually blind, and some lack eyes altogether. Since no green plants grow in caves, these animals depend largely on food that is washed in by streams or mud. Number 2. Which creatures have lived in each cave zone? Number 3. Indicate whether each item below characterizes the dark zone of a cave. Questions 4 through 5. Listen to a psychology professor talk about personality types. The theory of personality types suggests there are pairs of what are known as type preferences. Type preferences are not the same as character traits that can be worked on and changed. Rather, they're preferred ways of being in the world, different, um, different ways of uh, experiencing daily life. One well-known pair of type preferences is extroversion-introversion. Some people are extroverts and some are introverts. Extroverted people are by nature continuously aware of events outside of themselves. Extroverts turn outward to the world around them to pick up uh, ideas, values, and interests. Extroverts, therefore, usually have a variety of interests and sort of take an active approach to life. Introversion is just the opposite. Introverts look inward for resources. Introverts pursue fewer interests, but on a much deeper level. They sort of take a reflective approach to life. What I mean is, they involve themselves in inner events, ideas, and impressions. 
introverted people usually prefer to learn in private, individual ways. Number four. Indicate whether each phrase below describes an extrovert or an introvert. Number five, what type of assignment would an introverted student probably prefer? Questions 6 through 10. Listen to a talk given by an economics instructor. One of the major problems in our economy is inflation, a situation in which prices are going up faster than wages. Thus, a person has to work more hours to pay for the same items. For example, let's say that this year a loaf of bread costs $1, and the average salary in the United States is $10 per hour. That means a person could earn enough money to buy a loaf of bread in one-tenth of an hour or six minutes. Then, halfway through the year, the price of the bread goes up to $1.25, while wages stay the same. That means that a person now has to work one-eighth of an hour, seven and a half minutes, to buy the same loaf of bread. Now let's say that at the end of the year, wages go up to $11 per hour, but the price of bread goes up to $1.50. Now a person has to work more than one-seventh of an hour, over eight minutes, to buy the same loaf of bread. As you can see, if more and more work time is spent earning money to buy loaves of bread, employees will have less money left over to buy other things. Inflation means that the same money buys fewer things, and everybody's standard of living goes down, even if salaries are going up. Some kinds of inflation are worse than others. Moderate inflation does not distort relative prices or incomes severely. Galloping inflation happens rapidly, say at a rate of 100% or more within a year. And then there is hyperinflation, inflation so severe that people try to get rid of their currency before prices rise further and render the money worthless. Times of hyperinflation are usually characterized by social and political turmoil. Number six. What is the main purpose of the talk? Number seven. Why does the instructor talk about a loaf of bread? Number 8. What happens when prices go up but salaries remain the same? Numbers 9 and 10. Based on the information in the talk, indicate whether each sentence below describes moderate inflation, galloping inflation, or hyperinflation.